Talk about artillery. The gods of the battlefield. Alright, starting with the T-92, it does have a rather, rather large cannon, but it has a very slow rate of fire. Its penetration is it's good, but you don't really need to worry about penetration so much in artillery. And it's got good, solid damage, but its accuracy and aiming time are really kind of disappointing. But, you know, as you go up in the artillery, you will see that the faster you fire, the less accurate you are. Or in this case, sometimes it is the more powerful you are, the less accurate you are as well. Now, you don't really need to worry about armor so much artillery, seeing as how most of them have pretty sad armor, except for the British one. This one has terrible armor. It's not very fast, though, which is actually kind of disappointing, because if you have low armor, you'd want it to move pretty fast. And its gun traverse speed is a little bit mediocre compared to the other tier 10 artilleries. But its gun is a solid hitter. It is a good hit. But I would never recommend fire unless you are 100% aimed in. Now that being said, the tier 9 is actually preferred for clan war sometimes because it is a little bit weaker. But it fires faster and the tank itself is very fast and it has a big, nice turret that it can... Very, very juicy turret. It turns nice. It's got a big window. The British one is kind of like the heavy artillery. It does decent damage, it's got good penetration, but it's slow. It's aiming time and accuracy are terrible. Truly terrible. But it has good armor. That is good armor. Even in a tier 10, that might actually bounce some of the smaller mediums, or if you run into a tier 8 light tank or something, that might ricochet some of those or absorb some heat rounds. That being said, you don't have very much hit, very many hit points, but you know it is higher than the T92 had hit points, and it is also slow because it is so heavy. Its gun traverse is the same as the T92, a little bit disappointing, and it is slower. It only has two types of shells, which I think is kind of interesting. It doesn't have a gold round really; it just has two types of high explosive. Moving on to the Germans, this one is to be feared, as you usually see this one or the back Chile and French artillery in Clan War. Medio the penetration is a little bit mediocre, but the rate of fire is much faster than the other ones, and it has good damage. It's a little bit less accurate, but it has a really good aiming speed, being a whole second faster than some of the other ones. Now, being on an E100 chassis, it is not very agile, but it doesn't have very good armor either, so it will be a little bit faster than an actual E100. And if it wasn't, then I'd be a little bit surprised, because the A100s are very slow. It has a very good gun traverse speed, being 12. It is a whole 4 faster than the other ones. Meaning you will be able to swivel your turret if you're rotating from one side of the battlefield to the other. You will be able to do that very quickly. And it does have a gold round, which is very high penetrating, just like the T-92's gold round for its artillery. We're going to talk about the French one last, because that one's the most complex one. Let's go to the Russian object. If you get confused about the objects, don't worry, because there are all these little tiny symbols right here that tell you this is an artillery, and the other objects are the other dumpsters of mediums and tank destroyers and all that stuff. This one you don't see very much. Sorry, I had to take a breath. It does fire faster. Its penetration is a little bit lower, and it has like the lowest damage out of all of them, besides the Bactillian. But it is more accurate and it has a good aiming speed, which is impressive. Go Russians! They finally have a more accurate tank than everybody else is at their tier. Now that being said, it is relatively fast. And it has a good sort of armor. I'm just kidding, that's terrible armor. But its gun traverse is good, being 12. That is pretty decent. But again, you don't see very many of these, and I'm not really sure why. I guess because most people just stop on the trains. On like the SU-14 and the, S the SU-8 and all these just because they're so huge. Not really sure why that is. Why would you need a giant train just to launch? That's the wrong tank. This is Bactillian. Being on the Bactillian of a medium tank, pretty much, it is a fast tank. That being said, it does have an autoloader, which people love autoloaders and people hate autoloaders. Being a minute and a half to reload, well, 10 seconds off. Math is hard. Being a minute and a half to reload, and having six seconds in between each shell, but has four shells, which is good. And its 
penetration is a little bit lower than all the others, and it has the weakest damage, but it is more accurate and the fastest aiming one out of all of them. Which, in fact, does mean if a mouse is holding still, you might, if you get lucky, be able to clip him. Not 100% sure if that's possible, really, dealing how much penetration you have. You'll probably be smashing into him for about 400-500 damage instead of doing full damage because the mouse has so much armor. Unless you're point-blank shooting him in the rump. Now, that being said, the Bactilian is very fast. It is the fastest one. It has a full oscillating turret doing 360 degrees. It has terrible armor, but that's alright because it's really fast and its gun traverse is a little bit lower than some of the others, but then again it's a little bit faster than some of the others. So it's kind of like even and odd, you know, it kind of goes with what you want to do. Now I can't tell you what artillery you should be playing, but I can tell you that in most of the clan wars you're going to see the Bactilian artillery and you're going to see the German E100 artillery. That being said, because those are the two faster ones and more accurate, and they have the most bang for the buck. And the French artillery line is heavily played, really. So maybe you want to be a little bit different and go for the British one or the American one. But again, I can't tell you what artillery to play. I can tell you about them. I can tell you a little bit of experience I've had about them. And then everything else is up to you, depending on what you want to do with your artillery. What you want to do with your life. Maybe you want to be a fast, soft hitter. Maybe you want to be really, really slow, but make sure you miss most of the time. And when you do hit those couple of times, you do 2,200 damage to the enemy. Or maybe you want to be an American one because you're a patriot and you just love having big cannons and you want to do 2,250 damage every time you hit somebody. Or maybe you like being a pansy and you want to do the French Bechilian and dump shells on top of somebody as fast as you possibly can, possibly clipping them. So if the first shell does hit them in the tracks and they don't react fast enough, being four seconds, maybe you could hit them one more time and track them again, and they waste a repair kit, and then you hit them again, and then you hit them again, and then they're probably still alive because your gun is weak. But, again, that's all your choice.